sit down, I hit record, and I get a text from my wife saying, buy me this with a link to cars.com. That is par for the course. This is Matt Day. Welcome back to Archives. everybody doing this week i uh you know i'm sitting here got my dog with me first of all if you're watching on youtube this is the perks of watching on youtube you get to see taker my uh probably 10 or 11 year old dog we're not 100 percent sure but he's getting up there uh he's joining me today for the podcast he loves coming to work with me so I figured he could just sit here and uh, settle in with us. So, uh, but you know, I'm sitting here, I'm recording the intro, and I'm I'm thinking back to a comment I got last week. Uh, somebody let me know that I'm I'm trying to be someone else that I'm not because I've got headphones on and a big microphone and uh, hitting the intro music. Um, apparently, you know, caring about the audio quality and wanting to do something like that. I guess I'm not staying true to my roots, so <laughs> I apologize. Uh, you know, it, no, it's it's funny that I get comments like that um, as I kind of do things a little differently than I have for the last six years. Uh, I'm getting a lot of comments, not a lot, I, I shouldn't say a lot of comments. I'm getting a few here and there where people are uh, just kind of confused, like maybe they think something is, like I'm going through some big change, I don't really know. Uh, in all honesty, it's just more of myself and my personality and what I really want to do coming out. So, um, yeah, I appreciate those of you that, uh, are enjoying the new format and just kind of the change of pace with the channel. I've just been at this point where I'm like, I want to make what I want to make and how I want to make it. And I'm just, uh, I'm having a lot more fun with the YouTube channel these days. I'm going to be completely honest. So, I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. Um, But today for archives, I've got a few things I want to talk about before we jump into questions, but I've got some really good questions that you guys sent in. So as always, thank you to everybody that has uh, sent in questions on Instagram. I'm probably going to do some kind of setup where I have like a direct email address that is specifically used for people submitting questions because it's like every week I just post something up on Instagram, uh, you know, on my feed and tell you guys to leave questions in the comments, which is fun. Like I like that and I like that other people can see the questions being submitted. So it's like there's kind of some accountability there, you know, for questions that get a lot of likes, like there's a lot of uh, demand for that one question. That's a good way for me to gauge what I should and shouldn't talk about, but I don't know. We'll see. You guys let me know in the comments what you think in terms of, uh, getting questions in here. Uh, the other night, well, first of all, uh, I did a new series or started basically a new series on the channel, uh, some recent photographs, and it's just me sharing some photos and talking about each photo a little bit, uh, what went into it, what I shot it with, why I shot the photo, that kind of thing. And it was a lot of fun. I didn't think people would enjoy it as much as they did. So those of you that watched it and gave me feedback, I really appreciate it. Um, And I started thinking, I'm like, why does this work for me? Like, why am I more inclined to do this than photo walk videos? Because like the format of a photo walk video has become a thing on YouTube Um, in, in photography in general, but especially film photography. And I love, I love going on photo walks. Um, but I feel like a lot of the photos I make that I'm really happy with, they're so much more spontaneous. I didn't set out to go out and like, okay, today I'm going to shoot. <coughs> Excuse me. I wasn't like today I'm going to go out and shoot. It's very much like, you know, I just see something and grab my camera and I always have my camera with me. So I feel like sometimes when I go out and make a photo walk, it's good practice, but I'm not out making photos that I'm like really inspired by. Like so much of my favorite photos that I make, so many of those just come from like spur of the moment things where I wasn't out 
just for the sake of taking photos. So I think that's why that format works so much better for me. Um, some people can just go on a photo walk and make tons of photos that they're really happy with. Um, I feel like I need that level of like spontaneity in it where it's like just something just happens uh, or I happen to see something and then I like, it doesn't always have to be a fleeting moment, but just um, I see photos throughout random days. It's not always when I'm out specifically to shoot photos. So uh, I hope you guys are enjoying that format. I know it's not as like exciting as a photo walk video where it's, oh, I'm going out and we're just going to see what I find. I do appreciate that as well. And I'll probably do some photo walk videos as well. But um, I really like the idea of just sharing a lot of the in-between moments that you don't see on a typical photo walk. So yeah, hope that makes sense. Um, but one of the funniest things the other night, I think any film shooter is going to appreciate this. Uh, I was on a FaceTime call for like two hours with, uh, one of my really good friends, Garrett Remy, uh, super talented photographer. Um, he is, uh, he just is in the process of a move. So they moved, I, is it Washington? I think they're in Washington now, but I can't remember because they're kind of in between, Seattle and Portland. So I don't know if they're, yeah, they're, they're up way up, uh, up in the Northwest, but he was talking to me about, um, scanning film because they, they just kind of are getting settled in and he's scanning in a bunch of film and, you know, he's working through a backlog of so many different photos and scanning everything. He's like, you know, this is just taking so much time. And I was like, you know, I haven't developed and scanned my own film in like a year and a half now and part of me really misses it because I would always like that was just such an exciting thing for me I'd shoot some photos and I'd think oh man I can't wait to see this and the act of developing the film and pulling the film out of the tank and seeing the negative and then even the scanning process like for a little bit of time I really looked forward to that process and I enjoyed it and I was like you know maybe it's just rose tinted glasses um and, and I don't actually, it, it wasn't that great. Maybe it's just the fact that, you know, I'm looking through rose tinted glasses and because I haven't done it for a while, that's why I miss it. And Garrett was like, yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. It's a waste of time. <laughs> and I just started cracking up and he's like, listen, I'll tell you what happened. One day you made a photo that was really good and you had put so much time and effort and energy into it. You went out, you shot the photo after composing everything, you put a lot of thought into the, just making the photo itself. You know, then you finish that role, then you develop the film and you see the negative and you hang it up to dry and then you scan it and you scan it in and everything. And at the end of it, you had something that you were actually happy with. So your brain just tells you, you know, yeah, this is all worth it. It's worth all of those steps because now I have something good. Uh, and you know, it's like, that's the most accurate thing because I think, I mean, for me personally, the vast majority of the photos I make, I'm not happy with, but when I make one single photo that I'm really happy with, if I went through all that trouble, it's like, oh yeah, all of that whole process was worth it. And, uh, Garrett was like, yeah, dude, we're just lab rats. Like we got a taste of that cheddar one time and now we just can't stop chasing it. And we're just going to repeat it over and over and over, uh, which is just like the most accurate thing ever. Because I think any film shooter that goes down that rabbit hole of like, Oh yeah, I want to develop all my own film. I want to scan everything myself. Um, you just feel so much closer to the whole process. And, uh, I don't know. I, I miss it at times, but I think, I think he's onto something there. Like, yeah, it's, it's rad, but, um, the time that it takes, like, I just know there's no way I can, I can manage that right now. But, uh, one day I'm sure I'll get back to it, uh, when I can, but when I've got, you know, two little kids and, uh, a lot of work, it's, that it, it, there's just no way. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump in to some questions here. I'm going to get a drink of water. Try not to disturb my dog. Oh, he's giving me a look. He's like, dude, yeah, it's just water. We're good. I think I've deeply offended my dog. He's giving me a look. Man, poor guy. All right. Um, I'm assuming Dominic King. It's D-M-N-K-K-N-G on Instagram. 
Uh, when can we expect your go-to films video? Yeah, that will be up, I think, later this week. Um, basically just sharing uh, a few different film stocks that are my go-to film stocks. They're the film stocks I naturally grab before any others and just kind of sharing some photos and talking about why. So that video, hopefully at the end of this week. If not, it'll be up at the very beginning of next week. Hannah Gimblet Photography. Hannah, longtime watcher of the channel and follower on Instagram. Always appreciate the support, Hannah. She says, hi, Matt. Very much enjoying the Archives podcast. It's something that I look forward to and love to tune into. I've been completely bedbound since last June due to chronic health issues. Times are tough, and to help with the state of my mental health, I need to get back into some photography despite it being from the bed. If you were in one spot for such a long period of time, what type of photography project would you delve into? I look forward to hearing your thoughts, Matt, and I hope you and the family are all doing well. Hannah, again, thank you for the support, and my thoughts are with you. I cannot imagine um, what you're going through. I've seen uh, my brother go through a lot of uh, bedbound, you know, periods of time, basically, um, from being a quadriplegic and having, you know, a bunch of different health issues as a result of that. So I know, uh, I know it's it's tough right now. So uh, I I appreciate you, you know, reaching out and everything. But again, thoughts are with you. Um, if you ever just need to vent and talk, just shoot me a message. You know that. Um, in terms of photography. That's definitely tough, um, and I can't speak from experience, obviously, but I think if you – my first thought is the fact that you're in the same place for such a long period of time, that perspective, your perspective in terms of like your location isn't changing, but the things around you might be, and that would be kind of the thing I would try to focus on to show your surroundings and any changes that there might be considering you can't change the perspective itself. So um, whoever your primary caregiver might be, um, including them in some photos as they're doing different things to help you. Um, if there is a window uh, where you are and you can see outside going from night and daylight, um, anything that you can show to kind of show that and maybe show the change of light and the change of, you know, time of day, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know exact, I can't remember where you live. Um, I feel like you're not in the States if I remember right. Um, but possibly, okay. A massive spider just walked across my floor. Um, going to pretend I didn't see that because, <sighs> Okay, sorry guys. Uh, I'm gonna just keep it going and pretend I didn't just see that, and and hopefully Taker doesn't see that. Um, so if if you can see outside though and see any kind of trees or anything like that, um, maybe showing you know as the leaves are changing or as the leaves are falling uh, to show like the progression of time, um, especially if we get into the winter months and uh, you know you start to see like snow and things like that. Anything that you can see around you that's changing, um, or honestly, like maybe if there were, you know, some sort of flowers, you know, at your bedside and showing them going from being like fully bloomed and everything to, you know, starting to, to dry up and be really brittle. And uh, that might be another interesting thing just to show that progression of time. But that to me is what I would try to focus on is the one perspective that you do have, how things are changing in front of you. Um, again, just to show that time progression. And again, I can't speak from experience, but that to me is kind of like my natural gut reaction. That's what I would want to see. So again, Hannah, I hope you're doing well. Um, again, I'm thinking of you. And if you ever need anything, just reach out. Um, Levi underscore Zim says, what was your first bad experience in film photography? First bad experience for me, I mean, uh, uh, despite you know, my first rolls of film being either all white or all black because I was either underexposing things to the point of uh, not being usable or overexposing things to the point of not being usable. Um, so believe it or not, yeah, you can blow out film because trust me, I did it with my first few rolls of film. I didn't have a teacher or mentor or anything that I could go to for stuff. So it was very much just trial and error. Um, but in terms of like, once I was capable, you know, and I, and I knew what I was doing with exposure and things like that. Uh, one of the first times I developed film, I was developing in my bathroom and I knew, 
you know, I, I this was before I just started using water for stop bath, and I bought a bottle of stop bath, and for whatever reason, I didn't think about diluting it, you know, despite it being this like maple syrup like texture uh, or consistency. So as I'm developing, I just go ahead and just pour just straight stop bath out of the bottle, th- this thick syrupy uh, chemical into the film and, you know, do that for a minute or so, whatever, pour it back out and then go on to fix it. And the result of that, when I pulled the film out, I could tell something's not right. It was kind of like it, it looked like it was trying to curl up already, like the second I pulled it out. And I don't mean curl up you know, from one end, you know, from the last frame to the first frame. I mean, from sprockets to sprockets, like that way, it's kind of like cupping in on itself. And I'm like, that just, it doesn't seem right. So I'm like, whatever, I'll hang it up to dry, hang it up to dry, come back a couple hours later. And it is this completely rigid, like if, if, have you seen like the long, like yardstick long, um, uh, pixie sticks, like the really long, massive pixie sticks that are these this like little plastic tube that they come in. That's exactly what this roll of film looked like. Think of an entire 35 millimeter roll of film, but it's as stiff as like a, a tree branch. And so you could just grab it by one end and just kind of wave it around like this massive wand, basically. Um, and that was when I realized, okay, I did something wrong. And then I started doing my research and I was like, oh yeah, I can't just pour uh, molasses into my into my developing tank. So that was probably my first like bad experience, which it wasn't even like, you know, I'm sure most of the photos were trash anyway, but um, that was probably like the first bad experience where I was just like, why am I even doing this? Cause now I'll never see those photos or whatever. But, uh, yeah, make sure you dilute your stop bath people. Uh, the eighties song says, despite being a smaller town, Chillicothe seems to have a really strong artistic community. Any tips for helping build that in your own hometown and for collaborating with other creatives? Man, I wanted a strong photo community in Chillicothe for so many years. Um, for the longest time, it was just me. Like, the, I mean, there were other photographers for sure, but they weren't people that I like hung out with. Um, and I was just always like, I'd see friends of mine, you know, all over the states, and they're going on photo walks together and like just hanging out, shooting photos with each other. And I'm just like, dude, I wish I had somebody who was like really into it. And then probably around 2013, I'd say, uh, one of my best friends, Josh Richter, um, I was living with him at the time, uh, maybe the year before that. And I was like, dude, you need another outlet. Like he's, he's the vocalist for a band called Bather. Check Bather out. If you like metal, like heavy, like death metal type, uh, type music. Um, super, super good band. And Richter is just one of the most talented people I know in terms of writing, in terms of vocals. Um, and, and insanely like, creative and artistic and I'm like you need another outlet that is just you you don't have to worry about a whole band and like coordinating stuff because like I you know being in a band from just watching all of my friends like it's a lot of planning a lot of coordination and you know you always have to rely on other people and I'm like you need something that you can just do yourself oh god the spider's back it just went under my lamp okay this might get bad people stay tuned. Um, so yeah, I was like, Josh, you need to, to have something that you can do. You can go outside and just do something completely by yourself and you don't have to worry about what anyone else is doing. And, uh, you know, I was like with skateboarding and photography, photography, I can just do literally anything and I don't have to worry about it. And I love that it's such an individual kind of thing, but it's always fun when you do it with friends too. So I got him into it and I got a handful of friends that were like really into it for a while. Uh, they all bought K 1000s. They all learned how to develop their film. And like, it was just sick. Like Josh made a dark room in his house and was making his own prints. Like it was just really rad to see other people, find you know something that i love so much like they found a new passion for it themselves and then uh on top of that now like there's a younger group of guys that i've been hanging out with a ton who i i personally didn't get them into photography they just are all into photography and they're great at what they do um let's see i mean nathan herschler trent brown jesse james brad nisley like 
all these guys that I've I've mentioned recently, uh, Branson Moody, who was in a recent video, like uh, they're all into photography on their own, but they're just really starting to like they're really developing their own style and they're finding this love and passion for Chillicothe and photographing Chillicothe. And it's just so rad to see. So, uh, yeah, shout out to all of those guys because it's been amazing seeing this like next generation of photographers in Chillicothe that are just killing it. And, uh, you know, my, my like hopes are that I can provide any sort of like experience, like just practical experience that I can give them, um, so that they can continue to learn and grow and like do all of the things for them that I wish I would have had someone, you know, in my life that was like sort of a photography mentor in a way. Um, obviously my photo book collection, like letting them just about drop my iPad, uh, my photo book collection, like letting them, you know, just basically rent out anything they want and borrow any books. Like, um, I just want to try and like foster that creative community. So it's been really rad, but um, in terms of like how to do that in your own hometown, I mean, honestly, it just starts with like messaging people, hitting people up and finding out, you know, where the creatives are in your area. Um, obviously, with a small town like this, I mean, everybody kind of knows everybody. But in a bigger city, I feel like it would probably be even easier because you have so many different people and so many different opportunities for photographers and creatives that uh, there's got to be a way to, to reach out to people. So use social media, try and find who the photographers are in your area and uh, just message them. You know, I mean, if 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 they're good people and, and they're not super competitive, like, you know, cool guys, then then, yeah, for sure. Most people I would think would be down. So highly recommend, uh, you know, trying to build any kind of like creative community in your area, though, because now that I finally have that here, it's like it's incredible. Uh, Bob Sykes questions. Why haven't you featured your beautiful dog more? Taker is somebody that he's my first dog. Um, I always wanted a dog growing up. And as soon as I got my house, that's what I did was me and Molly. We went to the shelter and got this guy. And uh, I haven't featured him more just because at my previous location, I couldn't bring my dog with me. Now I can bring my dog, so Taker has been coming to work with me just about every day, and it's seriously the best. Um, he's getting older, and he loves just being here because it's quiet, but he also loves going on walks and seeing everybody else here in the office. Everybody loves him. Uh, he's just the little office dog now, so it's awesome. I love having Taker here, so you'll be seeing plenty more of him uh, in these videos, I'm sure. Uh, Zach St. Ward or Steward? I don't know. Is it saying, is it, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce the name, uh, but I've talked to Zach uh, uh, plenty of times on Instagram. It says, any update on your mom? Also, when you are making images with family members who aren't your wife or kids, how do you treat making photos if the family doesn't like having their photo taken? Um, me personally, uh, well, first of all, update on my mom. Uh, she's doing pretty good. She is starting some radiation this week, actually. Um, I think it's like the just every day this week, the doctor wants to hit um, every day for five days uh, and like hit this one spot pretty hard, um, mostly because he's concerned about um, the cancer around her spinal cord. And he's like, I just want to make sure that everything there is, you know, taken care of and, and we can really hit it as hard as we can. So uh, she's starting that this week. Um, she's been feeling pretty good though. She obviously has days where she doesn't feel that great, but um, for the most part, it's been good. Um, and the kids have been able to spend time with her and that's been amazing. Um, she actually did though, uh, just, just text me a couple of days ago. And I, I mentioned recently on the podcast, I was like, you know, um, I want to make photos of my mom as she's going through this, but I'm just not sure if I'm ready. I'm not sure if she's ready for that. Uh, so I'll keep you guys posted. And just a couple of days ago, she texted me and she was like, Hey, we're supposed to be documenting this, you know, the good and the bad. So let's do it. And I was like, well, <laughs> I'm glad you asked because I wasn't sure if you were ready and I didn't want to put that on her, you know, like it's, it's tough to, to like, toe that line where it's like, I'm, I'm very transparent with people and I share literally anything, you know, and I don't expect everybody to want to do that or be comfortable with doing that. And I want to be as respectful as I can. And so 
I never wanted to one like put that pressure on my mom to say you know because I know my mom even if she didn't want to if I asked her she would agree to it um, because she puts literally everybody else before her and um, I just I, I this is this is her journey not mine and um, you know she was like no I, I think this is important and I, and, I, and I actually I want you to do this so I was like okay like that's that's all I needed to hear but I wasn't going to you know put that you know on her and she was like you know I think it's important because you know if you if you share the photos and share how you feel you know in the photos and like talking about the photos whether it be on Instagram on your YouTube channel she's like it could possibly help someone else out there and then if it does then that makes everything worth it so um that's exactly like how I viewed things you know it's like cancer is it's universal doesn't discriminate it will happen to just anybody you know and um it's tough, man. It's it's a really hard thing that people go through as individuals, as families, and it's like that's that's like the the heart of of what I try to do with my YouTube channel. It's like I just want to connect with people. I want to be able to have real like human interaction through this, you know, social media, this internet, whatever. Um, and it's like, yeah, if, if I can share anything that is helpful to somebody else or comforting to somebody else, then that's that's what it's all about. And so to hear her say that was really encouraging. And so now I am just going to start a new project about my mom and her cancer. And I have no idea yet how I'm going to shoot it or, or what direction I'm going to go with it, but I just have to get started. So, um, I mean, I've made a couple photos before of her, like, you know, with her first round of cancer, I made photos as we buzzed her head, uh, as she was like getting her chemo treatment, stuff like that. But, um, never like really focused on it as a project again, just to try to like respect those boundaries. Um, especially this time around after being in remission and then the cancer coming back, it's like, you know, it was a, a touchy subject for sure. So I'm, I'm very, very glad that she wants me to do that. And again, I hope it continues to like comfort other people who might be going through it or just to give some perspective at the very least. So, um, to answer your other question though, Zach, uh, thank you for asking about my mom though. I appreciate that. Um, when you're making images with family members, uh, and they're not really comfortable with it, how do you go about it? To me, it's all about just helping them understand and like letting them know why you want to make the photo so much. Um, you know, for me, it's because I love these people. I love my family. I love my friends. If I'm making photos of them, oh my God, guys, I am so sorry. This spider, I just watched it drop from the wall and it's running around. I don't want to kill it. If this was me like 10 years ago, I would have been swatting at the thing, but now I'm a big softy and I love every animal on earth, but, um, except for ticks, uh, to hell with ticks. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, how do you treat making photos if the family doesn't like having their photo taken? Like I love my family. I love my friends. If they're uncomfortable with me, um, taking photos of them, I, I try to just make them understand like, look, I get it. You might be self-conscious, but the reason I'm doing this is because you're an important person in my life. And I want to make sure I have a record of that. Usually people are understanding of that and usually flattered by that and are more likely to, you know, let you do it. And they may say, you can't post this. You can't show this to anybody. And just respect that. I mean, I've done that countless times. There are so many photos of family that I take, and they're like, no, you can't post that. I'm like, that's fine. That's not why I take these photos. I take these photos for myself. So, um, And if you try to explain it to them, and they still are just not comfortable with it, just be respectful. And, you know, you have to be able to understand that, you know, some people are just not going to do it. Um, you can be persistent and, and try to make them understand. But at the end of the day, if they are not comfortable with it, just, just be respectful. Uh, w. Johns says, have you ever tried shooting large format photography or thinking of giving it a go? Uh, yeah, I actually shot with a crown graphic back in like 2013, uh, for a little bit. I didn't have it that long and I didn't shoot with it that much. Um, it was just not the right fit for me in terms of like how I shoot so much of what I shoot. Like I mentioned earlier is very spontaneous and, um, a four by five camera is often, uh, not spontaneous, uh, like 
compatible. Like it's just not the best idea to try and shoot everything with large format when you're looking for spontaneous photos, but not to say you can't do it, but, um, it just wasn't the right speed for me. Um, as I get older and I'm like thinking about more project based and project focused photography, there might be a time where it would be like, it would make sense. And the photos would be, uh, maybe better as a result of that. I mean, not just in terms of image quality, but like the process, the slower process, like it might work better for certain subjects and it might actually help me uh, see things a little differently. But um, for the time being, it's not really something I'm interested in. But at some point, um, you know, maybe when I'm not chasing my kids around, I'll probably get back into it. I want to shoot film says, do you think composition can be taught or is it inherent to certain people? I absolutely think it can be taught. I mean, studying different photo books and different photographers and just studying how they compose to me, that teaches me so much. And what I, what I usually like to do is I try to think, okay, I'm putting myself in their perspective, their point of view. What would this photo look like if I moved a little bit to the left or to the right, or if I went from a lower angle or a higher angle, or if I used a different focal length, like I try to think about things like that because often those are questions that they've asked themselves before they made the photo. And to me, it helps me figure out like why they ended up with that final composition. Um, but to your point, I think some people can just put together a composition that I would not possibly think of. Um, so I think it, it does come down to like having the eye or whatever, but you can absolutely learn comp, uh, composition and study different kinds of composition to like enhance your own. But, um, yeah, yeah. Don't be discouraged if it doesn't come easy to you because, uh, I don't think composition comes easy to many people, myself included. Uh, this one's kind of a two for one. We've got in my leisure saying, do you ever feel like you'll run out of things to photograph in your hometown, considering it's on the smaller side next to big cities? And then Carlos R right below had said, how do you shoot Chillicothe over and over again and still find more ways to keep it interesting and new every time? Um, I included both of these since they're both kind of, you know, roughly the same topic, uh, Chillicothe being a small town and shooting it. Um, I, so first of all, do I feel like I'll run out of things to photograph? I definitely don't think so because Chillicothe will continue to change and grow the same way people change and grow. Um, there's always going to be a different Chillicothe and the, the photos that I made, uh, for my first book, friend of mine, which is, I'm going to go ahead and speak it into existence so that it actually happens. And I hold myself accountable. Um, in October, the pre-sale will go up for the second edition of friend of mine. And it will be, essentially the book I wanted to make back in 2014. Um, super, super excited about it, but more on that later. But in October, the pre-sale will go up. Um, I want to be able to get this book out and shipped out uh, by the end of the year. So, so that's the goal. Um, but those photos are of a completely different town. They were all shot in Chillicothe. That's what it was all about, was making photos of my hometown and try to show people what I love about it and give them a feel for the town. And I couldn't make those same photos today because Chillicothe has evolved and shooting photos of Chillicothe right now, they will look completely different in five years and 10 years. Um, it's always going to change, you know, and, and that's what I love about it in terms of finding new and interesting ways to like keep shooting it. I think that just comes naturally from the town changing. I mean, I, I try to shoot things differently, but it's tough because I've walked these same streets so many times and, you know, see stuff happens. We have sirens, you know, in our town, it's not that small. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's like, I, I try to shoot things new and, and fresh and different, but it's challenging. Um, you know, it's just, you kind of just have to do it. And every day, like I said, you're going to have new light and, and different walks that you go on. And, um, I don't know. There, there are so many different ways though, to shoot Chillicothe that I haven't done yet. So I know that there's still plenty of work to be done. But, um, again, I, I try to just think about these photos as like long-term investments, not that they're going to make me a bunch of money, but I think that they're just going to hold a different value in five or 10 years when we're, you know, seeing a totally different side of Chillicothe. Um, let's see. Diego Urbina, Urbina says, I just saw the video of you getting bit by the tick. How has the recovery been? Are you 100%? 
Yeah, this is why I say to hell with all ticks. Um, so the tick, if for those of you who aren't aware, I was bit by a tick in 2018, uh, diagnosed with ehrlichiosis, which is basically like the dirty cousin of Lyme disease. And uh, I am, I, I like to say I'm like 95% there. Um, there are still some like lingering issues. Um, basically for six months, I had very limited mobility in my right hand and I couldn't lift my left arm up. Um, I had to work around that and thank God I was able to. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just about there. Sometimes still my right hand will kind of like tense up and it's like I can't move it. It'll, um, it, it kind of looks like this. Like, I don't know if you can see that in the video. Um, wow, the light is hitting directly onto my lens. So it is nice and hazy in here. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, like my hand will like kind of like tense up and I can't really move it for a minute and I have to like pry my hand apart and slowly I'll get the, the feeling back, um, which is always super fun. And uh, other than that though, pretty much everything. I, with all of the inflammation and swelling around my brain when I was in the hospital, um, that had neurological like issues and like symptoms that have taken a little bit longer to like go away. Like I, I would just have times where I would feel really foggy, um, really like unclear, uh, mind. And that was definitely frustrating. And, um, especially like trying to get my thoughts out on camera and it's not like a, a thing I've talked about a ton, um, just because it was it was like a, a really long term struggle kind of thing for me to to be able to get back to myself because everything would just seem so foggy. And when you're trying to do that on camera, it's so frustrating. And I was really really hard on myself about it for you know the last couple of years, and um, I feel much better this year than. Um, than I did last year and obviously the year before. And so it's just been something that I've tried to be conscious of and like constantly try to uh, keep it in check, take care of my mental health. It's definitely affected that. And that's definitely something that is super important. Sorry, don't mind Taker. He needs to get repositioned, I think. Um, there you go, buddy. Oh, buddy. There he is. Um, but yeah, it's like, it, it affected so much more of my mental health than I realized at first. And I think that's just because, you know, for six months I couldn't lift my arm. And for probably the first four months I couldn't even pick my kids up. So it was like I was so focused on that and frustrated that after I got my mobility back and I was still foggy and frustrated and just felt like I was, I don't know, it's, it's so hard to explain. Um, but yeah, I definitely feel much better now. And, uh, yeah, it's no joke. Take care of yourselves, people. Uh, and if you ever get bit by a tick, just save the tick. Try to remove it without, like, severing its head and the head gets lodged in. Uh, it's really gnarly. Um, but, yeah, take care of yourself. Get checked out and uh, don't just, like, brush it off because ticks are no joke. I almost died. So, uh, Liam Nethery says, do you shoot more keepers with the M10 because you aren't worried about wasting film? Um, I hate to admit it, but yeah, I think so. Um, I think just the idea of having no limitation to how many shots are left or how high I can push the ISO, um, it's just opened up doors to where I normally wouldn't shoot or wouldn't be able to shoot. And uh, as a result of that, I just shoot a lot more with it. Um, I For the last couple of weeks, though, I haven't used it that much. I've been shooting a lot with my M6, um, which I've got probably like seven rolls of HP5 I think I need to send out today. Um, but yeah, it's like as a result of not having that constraint, I'm like experimenting a lot more, which is a lot of fun. Um, but I think that that's translated back into my M6 because now... I'm like applying some of that same kind of mentality as I've been shooting with my M6 over the last couple of weeks. So I don't know. It, it I feel like maybe it's not the digital camera itself and like that's what I have to make the photo with, but it's like from using it, I'm naturally experimenting a lot more, um, which is a good thing. I'm all for that. Uh, Mike Dan, last question, says, I'd love to know a bit more about the work slash commercial side of what you do. Is it mostly freelance or are you an, on an agency roster or a mix of both? Uh, is it a real mixed bag or do you focus on certain types of work? Um, thank you, Mike. It says, much love from Perth, Western Australia. 
thank you for uh, sending in the question, Mike. Um, yeah, for me, everything I do in terms of my job is a very mixed bag. The short answer when people ask me, what do you do? I just say, I'm a photographer because that to me, I'm a photographer first and foremost, like that is what I am. Um, but I wear a lot of different hats with this YouTube channel, with this podcast, uh, doing mentorship sessions, doing wedding photography, doing commercial photography. There are so many different things that I do. So for instance, this weekend I shot a wedding. Uh, yesterday I filmed a YouTube video. Today I'm recording the podcast. Uh, later this week I'm helping out on a commercial shoot for my friend Bryce and his marketing agency. Um, everything is very like mixed bag, but I don't have an agency that I work for. I don't have a manager or agency agent or anything like that. Um, Bryce, he has this marketing agency and I went to high school with Bryce. I've known him forever. Uh, we've worked together dozens and dozens of times over the years. Um, and so for him, sometimes a client needs, you know, some lifestyle photos for a product or they might need headshots for their website or they might need product photography done. Um, stuff like that I will shoot or if I don't have the time to actually take on the job, I'll mostly kind of just do um, like sort of consulting kind of work and I'll help with the lighting, get their lighting set up so that they're good to go. And then one of his photographers, Trent, he can kind of take it from there and really kind of like go for the whole vision. Um, I just am more like on the back end technical side of things. Um, but I've had to do that less and less as Trent has gotten more and more comfortable uh, working with lighting, you know, so it's like I like to be able to help out anywhere that I can. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, everything else is very, it's, it's all a mixed bag, you know, from, from weddings to YouTube to personal projects. Um, but I like it that way. I like that I'm constantly changing things up and, uh, just using different tools basically. So it's a lot of fun. I like being a mixed bag, but to some people it would probably just be too much and they are much more focused on doing like one specific thing. Um, I like to say, like my friend Ray Barbie, uh, being a, a jack of all trades, master of none. So uh, that's kind of how I approach it, and right now, that's that's how I enjoy it. But um, guys, I think that's going to be it for archives today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, uh, I apologize for the spider interruptions there. That was uh, that was a little stressful. I'm going to try to find this guy and and somehow get him outside. Maybe I don't know. I, uh, maybe I should just leave him alone. I have no idea. Um, guys, I hope you all enjoy your week. Um, thank you so much for sending in the questions and enjoying the podcast. Uh, a couple new videos going up later this week on the YouTube channel as well, but that's it for today. I love you guys. Hope you all have a good week, and I will see you guys next time.